this. Okay, at the top of the page it says proving lines perpendicular, but we're actually going to add some other proofs. The only proof that proves lines perpendicular is the very first proof. Okay, and as I mentioned, we want the bottom of the day two, that second page of the day two notes, are all of the definitions and theorems about perpendicular lines. The first one was if angle BAC is a right angle, then ray AB is perpendicular to ray AC. So I don't want a statement that starts with perpendicular, I want to end up with Y. So I could use that first definition. If I have a right angle, then I have perpendicular lines. So I can use that one. The one to the right starts with if I have perpendicular lines, so I wouldn't want to use that. And then the second one there on the left, if G and H form a linear pair of congruent angles, then the lines are perpendicular. That's the shortest way to prove it. Okay? But we don't always remember that, especially word for word. So if you don't remember, you can use these two statements together. Okay? So the first one gives you a picture, and to the right it tells you that one and two are supplementary because they're a linear pair. The second part of that says not only are they supplementary, but they're congruent. Well, if they're supplementary, which means the two angle measures add up to 90, and they're congruent, the two angles must be right angles because 180 divided by 2 is 90 degrees. But how do we word that? Two angles that are congruent and supplementary from the statement above are right angles. And the right angle symbol you can use is the L with the box in the middle, or in the corner of the L. So you can use the symbol or you can write it out in words, okay? So when we do the first proof, we're gonna write it in the shortest possible way, okay? But I'm gonna show you, if you don't remember that, how else you could do it. So let's go ahead and write our givens in. Unfortunately, we're referring to angles with vertices and not numbers, so it's just a little bit more writing. And as I write it, I'm going to mark it. So FBE is congruent to EBD. FBA right here is congruent to DBC right here. And that's given. So these two statements don't provide me with another statement in reason right off the bat like a bisector would. If I know I have a bisector, I have two congruent angles. So the question is, what do we do with these two pairs of congruent angles? If you think about what you're trying to show, and these are where highlighters are important, we want to prove that ray BE is perpendicular to line AC. And we were just stating that from that note page last class, we end up with perpendicular lines if we have 90 degree angles. Was one way. So if I have right angles, I know I have two perpendicular lines. Or, again, the shortest way is if I can get these two angles, this angle and this angle, to be congruent because they are supplementary. So right away, let's just say the angle ABE is supplementary to CBE. They're along a straight line, even though they're broken up into parts. So number two would be angle ABE and angle CBE are supplementary. Now I'm going to abbreviate, it's our note page, 
okay? We just don't want to ever abbreviate on an assessment for me or the state, and that's because linear pairs are supplementary. Now, if there's a way that I can get them to be congruent, we're done. Because a congruent, uh, linear pair of congruent angles means the lines are perpendicular. So think about that. 